Well, hello, friends. This is David with Dave Fish 84. Welcome to another episode. On this one, we're at him again, and I'm going to show you one of my most effective ways not only to find speckled sea trout in the winter, but sometimes this is a technique that is the only way to catch fish. The speckled sea trout are all over this technique. I'm going to talk to you everything about trolling, colors, speeds, all kinds of different ideas and techniques, and a killer, killer catch and cook recipe at the end of this one. You're not going to want to miss. This is a really beautiful day here at the beginning of the year, 2024. First time I've been out this year, and it is gorgeous. The weather's been really cold and nasty, cloudy, windy, rainy, super cold, and finally we've got a nice weather afternoon. I had a friend invite me here to fish in a harbor where they said there'd been a lot of nice trout. We're gonna try. Sounds like trolling's been working well with small paddle tails and soft plastics. You know, hard plastic mirror lure is always gonna work, but I'm gonna start out doing some trolling with some smaller baits. I'm also using a big seven inch Z-Man. Gonna try for some giants. I might try for some Paul Browns and mirror lures and jerk baits. We'll try a bunch of things, but first I'm gonna try to locate these fish trolling and casting around the mouths of some of these. Well, you'll see it's a unique, unique harbor here. The fish, when they come back here, hold up real good in the winter. So we're gonna see what we can do. All right, so first plan of attack here is I got two rods trolling at the back, got a little pedal tail, and then my soft plastic mirror lure about five, six inches long, that straight tail, just trolling. Buddy was through here marking a lot of fish, but nothing yet, I think. First, again, I'm gonna troll slow. I just want those baits to go right along the bottom nice and slow. Seems to have a water temperature. Should be warming up this afternoon with that sun being out. There's a chance they're gonna move up into some shallow spots. Which I need to ask my friend about. He knows this area well. Those fish might be moving up where the bait is up shallow to warm up and feed. But first we're gonna start off trolling. See if we can't pick up some fish because when you find them they should be schooled up good and if I find one or two we go back and fish it really methodically and slow casting so it's gonna explore it's a new area to me and uh, see how it goes but certainly a beautiful place all right we're just trolling along still still nothing searching again this is that time you've got to find them you find them oh. it's either bottom or a bite on my left rod you're trolling keep an eye on that should be pretty deep so might have been a hit no, I think it's bottom. It keeps ticking something. But yeah, we're looking for fish. Once you find one again, they're schooled up this time of year. I'm casting ahead of me just to get the extra chance along some of the structure. But uh, cover a lot of ground, try to find these fish. Yes, it's all about covering ground and finding fish. You know, you really have to treat every fishing trip for speckled sea trout as though it's your first time on a new body of water. It doesn't matter if you fished it. A dozen times before and yesterday you killed them, everything can change on the drop of a dime when it comes to speckled sea trout. Every day can be different. Just go in, use the same thing you did yesterday, use your confidence bait, do what you did yesterday. But if it's not working, switch things up, cover a lot of ground, casting or trolling, and find these fish. And that's what we were doing. My buddy Jim marked a ton of fish in this area, had some short strikes, so I followed up casting. We tried for about 15 minutes here, everything from paddle tails to hard plastic mirror lures. Nothing was working. I, the bites we did get, I'm pretty sure were just white perch, like really tiny ones maybe. But we moved on, started trolling again to search and find those fish, and that's when everything changed for us on this trip. Okay, we are on with that little sartreuse. A little sartreuse, nice trout. Let's try to keep the pressure, okay? Right at the mouth there. Right at the mouth there with a the little chartreuse. Try not to get them tangled up near other lines. That not look very big. I'm gonna wing this one right in the boat. That's not small. Not big, not small. All right. Trout on the chartreuse. Paddle tail. All right, I'll pull these other lines in before I get tangled up or snagged or something, but yeah. That eat that sartreuse. If there's one there, there'll be more there. So I'm gonna go back, try casting in that area. See what we can do. Okay. Looks like about a 17 inch. 
first time using that Sartreuse, I had a feeling they just seem to love pink. They seem to love Sartreuse. And this thing is just so bright. And those little fish, whatever they were, were just all over this. So hit this with Procure, go back, try casting with it. Try with the mirror lure. All right, so I attempted going back and casting with a number of different things. I start off with this Paul Brown. Um, a lure I'm really trying to put time in with. Haven't had an, a bunch of success with it yet, but I know this is a lure that many people have done very, very well with. I'll continue to keep experimenting with this. I tried a hard plastic mirror lure. I tried paddle tails. I tried a number of things and just couldn't pick up a bite. So after about 10 minutes of casting everything I could think of to try in this area, I went back to trolling again. All right, here's my buddy Jim. We've been having a really slow start, but we've been patient. Look at this. A he doubled up. <laughs> right where, near where I just caught one. So I think we Is found... That sweet or what? I think we found us a school of them. That's right near where I just got that one. Oh, that got, is some crazy, crazy right there. That's a first I've seen. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I want to take a minute to explain to you my setup that's very, very important to this. You know, whether you're fishing from a boat or for a kayak, I love this Hobie. It is an incredible, incredible kayak, but no matter what kayak you're fishing in or if you're in a boat, I wanna show you, I'm always using at least two rods when I'm trolling, sometimes three, and it can get a bit chaotic. If you look in some of my other videos, you'll see it's really hard to not tangle up the lines when you get a fish on. You gotta keep on pedaling the whole time, keeping pressure on the fish, and even then still the lines get crossed. Thankfully, I've never lost a fish doing this, but it can be a bit of a mess. I always have, like I said, at least two rods. I like to use six foot six to seven foot medium action rods. Sometimes, just because it's fun, I use this little six foot ultralight that I got for catching stream trout in upstate New York when I used to live there from St. Croix. I love this rod, it's my favorite. This should be like famous at one point. I've caught so many giant fish, everything from big redfish to even giant stingrays. It's ridiculous. but. Don't be surprised at what you could catch with these little ultralights and they are so much fun as long as you learn how to angle the fish right. So I always will have a jerk bait, whether it's a Uduri or a Rapella X wrap or some kind of Rapella is, is a both a casting and or a trolling lure. And I this because with speckled sea trout, you need to change to be able to change the lures pretty quick. I always use always use these snap swivels because I can change the baits really, really quick. And with some of these lures, especially topwaters, you wanna to have either a loop knot or one of these to make the lure work right in the water. So this number one, super important. And after the rod, whether you're using a six foot ultralight like I do, which is a little crazy, but it is fun. Again, I would highly recommend using a six foot six to a seven foot medium action rod, paired up with a 2500 reel of your, of your choice. I prefer Shimano, but I use a number of different things from Pfluger and Daiwa and Berkeley, but Shimano is just the one that's lasted the longest for me, for sure. I pair them up with, this one's got 15 pound braid, but normally I have, I'm running 20 pounds, some guys use 10. The big one of controversy is the fluorocarbon leader. Fluorocarbon leader is super, super important whenever you're fishing a braided line because you want it to be invisible. Guys will go down as far as 10 pound line, I always stay with at least 20 pound because these try have big teeth and they shake their heads a lot on the surface. They can, If they swallow that bait and they get that line in their mouth, they're shaking their head, especially if it's a great big gator, trophy trout. I don't want to take the chance of losing that fish, so I'll always use at least 20 pound braided line on those little quick snap swivels. Now that lure that I was using to catch most of the fish on this trip was this little like cigar type lure plastic mirror lure it's called the mrlj6 little john the little johns are awesome i use a number of different colors but this color right here was just killer now here's the thing you're never going to be able to buy this color you can get the black but let me show you the the big hack that i do with this lure if you look at it that that tail is super chartreuse I'm gonna leave a uh, link in the description to all of these things, so if you want any of this stuff, you can find it from Amazon, from my links. But I use this Sartreuse highlighter that has a garlic scent, and I just put that on the tail of this lure. Let me show you what one looks like without this, but I am telling you, 
This stuff has such a pop, especially in the water. And that garlic smell, no doubt. I'm a big, big fan in scents. I'm always putting Pioke Procure on all of my soft plastics every single time. Link will be in the description. You, if you're not using this, you're missing fish. There's no doubt in my mind this makes a massive difference, not just when the fish are following it, and they can, fish can actually taste before they put it in their mouth with scent. It's crazy, but with it, there's a lot of science into this, but when the fish is behind that lure and there's a lot of scent, they can literally taste it before they put it in their mouth. I think that gives them even more confidence to take that bait, and once it's in their mouth, they're just gonna keep it and not spit it out right away. <clears throat> so this is that color, it's just pure black, or like a, a root beer color, basically, with some gold flakes in it. These got a little water in a the bag. They're actually normally darker than this, but when you put that sartreuse, I'm gonna show you just how good this works. So again, normally these are a lot darker than this. There's a little water in the bag and it, it softened up the color, but these are usually more like a dark root beer, almost black. No sartreuse in the tail, but watch what happens when I use this, this glow sartreuse dye marker. Instantly changes the color on these things. It looks good now, but when you get this in the water, it literally does glow in the dark. It is so bright. It stands out so much, and with that garlic scent, I mean, you can really smell it. This is the game changer right here. I use this on a number of my lures. When I use that, the Provoker, the bigger five inch soft plastic mirror lures, I use this oftentimes. I use it with all my soft plastics as I need to, to change things up. I'll use them normal, but I find with speckled sea trout, especially adding that sartreuse to the tail, killer. Now, I don't care what anybody tells you about trolling for trout. There's a funny story Captain Mike and I were talking about. He had heard about a really well-known trout fishing guide who says, we all troll, we just don't like anybody to know it. It works. Speed is really important. Depending on the time of year, the summertime, fall, spring, you can go a little faster, but in, this, in the wintertime, oftentimes you really got to slow things down big time. But I would say play around with your speeds, normally one to one and a half miles an hour in the winter, and you can experiment going faster than that in the warmer months, but it works. No doubt I have gotten citation trout trolling and I've caught in trout in times when no one else is getting anything. And this goes back to that theory I said before. I think there's times when these fish get in these moods where they just need to follow the bait for a while. The traditional casting, those fish will follow it, but they're not gonna necessarily have enough time to hit it where the trolling gives them time. This is a good memory with Captain Mike and his boat, where a man, trolling is the only thing that worked. And we found him in a spot in a weird place when we shouldn't have caught anything in the middle of the river. That's so trolling right is killer. It's a nice fish. And don't forget, even if yeah, people not, don't tell you they troll, monster, if they're a good trout fisherman, they probably troll a lot more than they'll admit to say it. There we go. <laughs> Do another mullet. Let's uh, swing around and try in a little bit. Pick the speed up so I don't get on the bottom and then slow it back down. Oh, there's a fish right there on this one. Right there. See, they're here. Hey, real close attention. So buy that, that no wake buoy. Buy that weight, no wake buoy. So this is with a small, really small, I've never used this one either. It's a little black, soft plastic mirror lure. Let's not try to get too much attention because I got these guys looking over here right now. We don't want everyone to see what's going on just yet because then everyone's going to be on them. Yeah, it's a nice one. This is a bigger one. This is a bigger one. It's like about a 18. Not too big, but 18. Swallowed that. Look at that. Inhaled that thing. Skinny. Long and skinny one. Whew. All right. So... Once we get everything ready, I went back to that same spot. Just picked up another one, fourth fish in that same spot. Look at how this fish just totally inhaled this dark, soft plastic mirror lure. I've never used these smaller ones, but I saw Jim was using a very small bait. That's it right there. That's two, I'm gonna eat good tonight. I usually don't keep two, but I'm gonna keep two tonight. The rest will let go. 
make another troll through there and then we're going to cast methodically we're going to troll up through again and then we're going to start methodically casting in there's no doubt there's a school of trout in there i'm going to try all right fish on it's been a while just hooked up So the trolling has worked consistently. Just this is like a new area. I'm gonna nice one. Oh, nice one. On that black again. On that black again. They're all good eating size trout. I see Jim's going in. We want to flay these fish before it gets dark. So that's gonna be the last one for the night right there. I'm gonna put this one on the stringer and we're gonna hightail it out of here. I'm gonna show you how to flay these things. So, uh, yeah, I think he wants another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. I normally don't keep this many, but we are keeping today. These are all really good size eating. Nothing's huge. So, uh, get this untangled and get out of here. Nice that piece of meat is. Nope, I bled him out. There's very little red in the middle. It makes a huge difference. It really does. I usually bleed mine. Yeah, I normally always bleed my fish out. This time I didn't, but I like you just look at the difference that white meat that he showed you compared to what you're going to see from mine. I did not bleed mine out. There's blood all over, not just on the outside of the meat, but it's in the meat. It really makes a world of difference. I highly encourage you just take your knife uh, while the fish is still alive, cut its gills in the water, and let it bleed out, and that meat will be super, super white, and it gets rid of any of that gamey fish flavor you get in your fish a lot of times. But man, we just went to work here. You're gonna see, we just blew through this, clean these fish up and no time. Now, if you've never cleaned a fish before, I do have other videos you can check out on my channel. I show you exactly how to fillet trout, drum, sheephead, any kind of fish. I do step-by-step -step tutorials on how to clean fish. I've done thousands of these things, so I'm pretty quick at it. Of course, there's always someone better, but we're pretty good at it. We got through it in no time. Probably this one because he's still got good fats too funny <laughs> all right so i'm excited about this part chinese egg rolls but trout speckled sea trout uh chinese egg rolls this is awesome we've tried this before with pork and other things i know this can be awesome this is one that i've been wanting to do for a while got the kiddos are going to help me i'm going to show you basics basically i'm just dicing up some celery some cabbage and some onions we're going to put them in this bowl with a little bit of salt, drain out some of the water. Then I'm going to put it in a colander and dry it out. We're going to start building these egg rolls. But first we got to do a little blackening with our sea trout. And then we're going to roll them up and deep fry. I'm going to show you the whole process. Check this out. All right, so I'm just cutting up everything into small pieces from the celery to the carrots. Small, uniform, similar size pieces. Everything needs to be very small. Just think, this is going to a Chinese egg roll. You want it to be nice and thin, every piece. This is the most tedious part is the carrots. But they're good. Everything is just gonna be cut real thin. Just like that. Like this in the bowl. We're just gonna pile this up with real thin ones. Then I'll put the carrots and the celery. Then put all the cabbage in there. Then all the carrots and celery on the top. And put some salt. Mix it all up and just kind of let the juices get out of it. Put it in the colander and drain it. All right, the trout soak inside of the refrigerator. Before I cook it, I always do this. We're gonna add some very cold water and salt it for 10 minutes. Generous, generous, generous with your salt. It's gonna make a big difference in the flavor and the texture of this fish. We're gonna set that for 10 minutes and we're gonna rinse it off and then dry it really well. We're gonna set this over. All right, now we got those vegetables all diced up. I'm actually gonna blanch these for one minute in boiling water, just one minute. Just gonna lightly cook them and then we're gonna 
put these in a colander and get all the moisture out of them. We'll give that one minute, just like that. We're gonna take our colander, dry these off. That'll shrink, shrink down just a tad bit too. So there's two ways to do this. I ended up deciding not to put the salt but to boil it for one minute, which is a great way to do it. But once you boil it for one minute in hot water, you gotta drain it with really cold water to stop the cooking. This is an excellent way. Then just drain the water and you're ready to go. All right, for these fillets of trout, these have been deboned, skinned, all that. We're just gonna make pretty much small chunks out of these, but like this. And we're gonna saute these. It doesn't have to be anything rocket science. We're gonna saute these and probably break these up and put these into our egg rolls. But we don't need big, big pieces. I wanna get as much flavoring and seasoning on these. Always check. See, I thought I had them all for bones. I could feel it with my thumb right there. There's another little bone chunk there. So we get rid of that. So now we're just adding our spices. This is Chinese five spice. I'm gonna add this in one of the links in the description so you can buy it. Awesome spice. Then black pepper and a little bit of salt, garlic powder. You can add some paprika, that's it. But Chinese five spice, salt and pepper is the base of this ingredients. Now, once you have your rub sprinkled on the fish. I just like to mix it all around, make sure all those spices get to know that fish on the coating really, really well. Now I'm going to add some oil to a hot, hot pan. I like to use avocado oil, but you don't want to add that fish until it's piping hot because you want to get a really good sear on this fish. And we're only going to cook it for about two to three minutes per side. So don't touch it until it's bent down at least two to three minutes on its first side so it doesn't fall apart on you. Really important. Once it's been there for that two to three minutes, I'm gonna give it a flip. Um, once I see the colors got the first one, I'll just keep going. Of course, you wanna move those smaller ones first because they cook quicker. Yeah, so just get all your fish on the plate. Don't worry if they break up at this point. For this particular recipe, if there's the one recipe you don't need to worry about your fish falling apart, you're gonna see we're gonna mix all of this in with our uh, vegetables here. Anyway, so we're gonna get all those vegetables into a bowl after they've been dried out and drained really well. And then we're gonna put all that fish in there. And I just tasted it, it was really, really good. But yeah, I'm just gonna flake it all up and mush it all in. We wanna make sure that there's a the fish is spread around in this mix. And as we're building it, I'm gonna eyeball and make sure there's good pieces of fish in every single wrap. Now, another key ingredient here is this chicken bouillon powder. This is key to Chinese egg roll, just like the basic flavor you're used to making Chinese egg rolls taste amazing. Add it like I just did there. I don't have an exact amount, but you kind of get the idea of what you saw that bowl. Generous amount for sure. Mix that. Now for the fun part, we're going to be building these. Well, it's not the funnest part. The funnest part's eating it, but this part's pretty fun. So we're going to take some of your mix there and just start putting it on this egg roll. I bought these at Food Lion here in Eastern North Carolina. You could ship you able to buy these at any major grocery store. So I'm just going to start rolling them up. Watch carefully how I do this. I start from one side, pull up the edges, and then tightly wrap it careful not to break it. Then you got to have a finger of water. I had a little bowl of water. I just wet my finger and just wet it so it'd stick at the end and you could close it up like that. All right, so I always do all my oiling outside so I don't sink the house up. I'm just going to lay these in this basket like this. I can do about four of these at a time and these take about six to seven minutes. So I'm just going to put those in there. Let them go for six to seven minutes. So they get golden brown. We'll show you how it's done. I'm gonna lay them on a rack here and just keep doing four sets at a time. These things look awesome. You can see we just pulled some out earlier. Now check this out. We're about to get this last batch out. Now you want to make sure the oil gets drained out of these a little bit each time before putting it up here. Of course, 
I did a taste test of one I had to make sure it was good. It's really, really good. I wish I could eat that. The flavors are perfect. So you're going to. We're going to get inside. I'm going to let these sit for a minute, and I'm going to cut them in half just to kind of cool them off for the kids. And we're going to let the four judges tell you how good they are. Ooh. Isn't that right, Tozer? Yep. Check that out. These things. Gosh, the sound of that, right? All right, moment of truth here. We're in a little bit of a rush, but we got it done. Let's give it a try. So we have our curry. We're gonna try that one first. Okay, this is this one here, the one that's a little more crispy colored. Pick that up and give it a try. That's a one with a little curry powder in it. Straight up without any sauce. We got yum yum sauce and Thai sweet chili sauce for our dip, but this is straight up. This is with speckled sea trout. Yeah, very good. Mm-hmm, I already tried the curry one. Now try the other one. Tell me if that one's good too. Okay, tell us to give it a shot. Yeah, those ones are a little hotter, so be careful. <laughs> it's fresh out of the oil. So I tried it straight up. I'm going to put a little chili sauce on it. I could eat this every week. Easy. With a curry in it. Yeah. They're both really good, but that curry in it, basically I did all of them the same except for four of them. I sprinkled a little bit of curry powder on the top before I rolled up the egg rolls. Wow, that makes a difference. So you guys want to eat this again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be good. All right, we got some rice going, some egg and tomato, then I got to get these kids dropped off to their mothers. But, uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you enjoyed this unique recipe, and we'll give it a try. And leave in the comments what you think. Uh, if you try this and what your experience is with it. I know you're going to love it. You can try this with any white fish, sea trout, any white fish you can think of. Of course, pork, any of that stuff. But this is just a killer recipe that everybody's going to like. But as always, God bless, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Please Bye. subscribe. Bye.